we're heading in to see some of the most impressive and the most important artifacts ever found on Earth, which date back to the end of the last ice age here at Chandelier Museum. So this is the painted boar statue recently discovered at Gebekli Tepe. It's the red ochre, which really blows me away. And this is a giant porthole style. And it just shows you how much amazing artwork was at just one site like Gebekli Tepe. Hey Megalithomaniacs, we're here at Şanlıurfa Museum in Southeast Turkey. Now this is a really important location. This is the ancient city of Edessa. This is also the town closest to Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe. And even this town itself has an ancient pre-pottery Neolithic site called Yemen Hali, where we know that the Earth of Man was discovered, which is on display in here. But first, I want to show you the brand new discovery from Gebekli Tepe, this remarkable boar statue, which has got red, white, and black pigment found on it, suggesting it was painted. But does that suggest many of the other elements of Gebekli Tepe were also painted? and show you what else they've got here. Even a reconstruction of Enclosure D at Gebekli Tepe. So we've got a lot to get through. We're gonna do it in different sections. So let's get in and take a look. So here we are. We're heading in to see some of the most impressive and the most important artifacts ever found on Earth, which date back to the end of the last ice age here at Chandelier Museum. So here we are inside the main part of Chandelier Museum, the Tastepla zone, the pre-pottery Neolithic era zone. Some amazing pieces here, and I'm gonna show you them bit by bit. We're gonna focus on the new discoveries first, and then we're gonna look at what else is on display here. So this is Enclosure D from Gebekli Tepe, at least a reconstruction of it here in Chandelier Museum. And look at the size of this place. It is monumental. It's like a cathedral of megaliths, T-shaped megaliths. And it's quite remarkable. There's some very famous stones like the over here, the vulture stone. We have the hold stone at the back to the north and these giant pillars here with these beautiful anthropomorphic carvings of like abstract humans. And it's just magnificent to be in here. You get a real sense of the scale and beauty of Gebekli Tepe. The porthole stone, where there's rubble here now, that is where the boar was found, a giant life-size boar with paint all over it. And so this pillar here was probably a T-pillar originally, which is now broken. And also here, which is just next to it, we have pillar 43, which, so if you were like looking from this direction, you would actually have pillar 43 and then the boar kind of almost facing you as you're giving a teaching about this particular pillar here. And over here, obviously we have the boar would be there. And over here, a new discovery. They've actually kind of got it here, like a fallen statue. But now that's been completely uncovered, the fallen one anyway, not the standing one. And that's got a giant hole carved through it as well. So this is the painted boar statue recently discovered at Gebekli Tepe and Enclosure D, just below the main porthole stone. And this is 1.35 meters wide, 70 centimeters tall at its highest point, and it's life size. So check this out. You can even see the paint, the red paint in the mouth, and it's also got black and white pigment on it as well. And we'll look more closely at it, but this is one of the brand new discoveries, monumental statue of a boar from Gebekli Tepe. I mean, it's quite a magnificent piece of art and obviously very ferocious in its appearance. You can obviously see the tusks coming out here. You can see the redness around the teeth. You can see his tongue hanging out. But what is it that's clutched within his trotters? Um, and it appears there's something there and although it doesn't have any features um, myself and my colleague Debbie think that this is a abstract human head you know in other words it's like a ball that symbolizes a human head 
And what's interesting about that is it questions what exactly the boar represents. And I think that it represents the transition of the person's spirit from this world to the next. And that in many ways, it is the same role as the skull crusher or uh, brain smasher of Native American tradition, which is uh, connected with the constellation of Cygnus, particularly the star of Deneb, um, that releases the soul at the point of death to allow it to go into the afterlife uh, or to ensure that it goes into the afterlife. It has a slightly different function to the psychopomp, but it's, it's almost like to ensure the release of the spirit and to make sure that it goes on its right journey into the afterlife. They think this is a slightly later date, maybe 8,700 BC, rather than 9,600, the beginning of the site, but we're not too sure. But to me, this is one of the most important discoveries from Gebekli Tepe so far. It's the red ochre, which really blows me away. And even down the side of it, you can see some of the black paint still on here. You can actually see the arms on it. You can see like the huge like, the tusks coming out. You can see the tongue. So this is just remarkable. And it makes you question just how many more statues, even tea pillars may have been painted at Gebekli Tepe. I mean, was it a colorful site or was it just stone color like we mostly see today? And then you can see the spine going up the back there. So you must remember that this wasn't the only thing found. Below it, as you can see in the image they've done down here, it was found on a bench, like and then the boar was on it, then there's the whole stone. The large slab that the boar sits on is 2.8 meters long and 1.38 meters thick with a depth of 31 centimeters with the H and the C motifs. There are actually three serpents because one of them is faded rather than just two. And there are actually four human masks on the far right side, although you can only really see three of them. On the top of the slab, there's like a cut mark and a circular shaped incision. And another slab to the left of that, you know, continuing the bench, is really interesting it's got like a perforation like a hole drilled all the way through it as well as a kind of scratched leopard carved onto it as well both of these obviously could have been reused tea pillars also of great interest was the fact that in the fill just on the floor in front of the boar statue about one and a half meters away an actual wild boar jaw was discovered which was it's a rare find, they haven't found many of them there at all, but it really does suggest that it was used there and it was part of ceremonial or shamanic practice, uh, possibly even a sacrifice. And this is something that the archeologists actually commented on. One of the other finds published in a paper by Lee Claire in August 2024, which has kind of been noticed by people, was this slab that was filled in a hole in the floor of enclosure D. It's 94 centimeters by 98 centimeters wide and it's wedged in by a little piece of basalt flint and limestone. There's also remnants of red ochre found on the northern edge of it as well. And the only thing found inside it was actually some flint blade, which was like a random thing. And they don't think it had any real meaning, although it might do because next to it, there's a very large H symbol that we find on the belts of the two main pillars carved you know, right on the floor next to it, which hadn't been noticed by anyone until relatively recently. So was this actually an important part of Enclosure D? There was a discovery actually in 1997, which has only just been really published, where a cyanite stone scepter was found with two H symbols carved on it. The length of the scepter, 25 and a half centimeters long. You don't often find these symbols of power brandished at these kind of sites. And the fact that it's got two H's carved on it could mean that that has very special significance and why we find the H carved all over this part of Gebekli Tepe. One other discovery was found in Enclosure C. This was published in a paper by Lee Clare in August 2024. And it discusses an interesting discovery of a, a part of a porthole stone found along the wall of the Dromos Avenue, 
which begins in the south, just south of Enclosure C, and it's got this huge U-shaped stone at its entrance. And then you go, you walk through this kind of passage to get to Enclosure C, and just within that passage, they found this half a porthole stone with this relief of a boar, another boar, you know. So we're finding this uh, motif over and over again. And in fact, multiple boar uh, carvings have been found in Enclosure C. It's actually known as the kind of building of the boar as such because there's so much in there. But this is really intriguing. So we're finding another porthole stone which looks like it's south to north along the avenue, along the Dromos, as Klaus Schmidt called it, going into Enclosure C. So we've got an image of that here. Another discovery which we'll look at in a moment in the museum was also found at Gebekli Tepe another part of a porthole stone this time with what looks like a vulture and either a canid or a leopard on it so this is a new discovery from Gebekli Tepe this is a giant porthole stone or part of one and it has what looks like a vulture and some kind of maybe a feline maybe a cane we're not sure next to it but you can see the shaping on it would have been a gigantic porthole stone probably in a wall some people say in the ceiling but these are way too heavy for that probably and it's very similar to other ones we've seen at the site so let's get in and have a close look at this so this is the vulture and this is the canid although some people suggested it could be a boar it could be feline we're not sure and you can see the shaping on it there. You can actually get a sense of it, sense of the whole shape of it. So this is like the bottom kind of edge of it, if you like. And then you go around here. It's broken, obviously. And this is like the interior part of the circle. So you can see the slight shaping on it there. So that is fascinating. So where this was found, we don't know. There's no information about it right now. But yeah, this is absolutely beautiful. And it just shows you how much amazing artwork was at just one site like Gebekli Tepe. Another very interesting discovery was a slab of stone embedded in the wall of enclosure d at the very base just above the kind of bedrock kind of carved bedrock and it had an h in the middle and it's got two kind of c's on either side the one on the right inverted but the one on the left is more like a kind of turned over v it's got a very sharp edge on it and i found this really interesting because this particular stone marks the exact spot of the winter solstice sunrise if you stand in the middle of enclosure d between the two main t pillars so i did a bit of research on this i looked at the alignments how they would look in you know, nine and a half thousand bc and uh, i found it very very interesting because when you actually place it there and you see where the solstices occur within enclosure d the summer solstice sunrise is actually rises behind pillar 30 which again is an h symbol but turned on its side like an i almost which is very very interesting so i overlaid a plan of the solstice sunrises uh, from this era you know using stellarium plus a graph made by lionel sims back in 2016 i wrote a paper about the astronomy of gebekli tepe not only do, do these two alignments fit pillar 30 and this newly discovered stone to the sunrises the shape they the difference in angle between the summer solstice in the northeast and the winter solstice in the southeast if you place the kind of turned over v next to the h if you enlarge that and place it on it it fits it's like marking the different angles between them which i thought was really really interesting so um you have this kind of symbol which may represent the actual angles between the, the summer solstice and the winter solstice extremes of the year. You can see that here. Even Martin Sweatman commented that the H symbols are sometimes related um, 
to the solstices. He actually wrote a paper back in 2022, the meaning of H symbols at Gebekli Tepe back in June 2022. And he even found similar um, differences and angles on uh, the Nebra Sky Disc as well, which is a whole other story. And also the V, because this is like a, a kind of V shape, but turned on, you know, turned over on one side, left of the H. You know, it's not just a C; it's like a turned over V. This is something that, again, Martin Sweatman found uh, very interesting in his research and his recent papers and even in his book about Gobekli Tepe that it was related to time controlling people or deities. Then there could be a representation of the differences between the solstices. And we know how important the solstice is at Karahan Tepe. They may have even kind of have had this connection. One of the other possibilities with the H is the fact that it could represent um, the horizon going through the middle, like the, the, the horizontal band of the H, and two pillars on either side could represent literally two pillars, because this winter solstice alignment is between two pillars. And if you're looking at it from the middle of enclosure D, you're going to see two pillars either side, and the horizon, which looks like an H, like an abstract H. Um, so again, again, we, we, we just it's just an idea, it's just a hypothesis, and we're not like saying this is what it is, but. We keep finding all these interesting connections between the symbols and the solstices here at Gebekli Tepe. So this is the first ever discovery made at Gebekli Tepe. It was found by the farmers back in the late 1980s, it's believed. They were so embarrassed by it, they didn't really know what to do with it. Eventually, they took it to Channel Earth Museum along with another statue, which had a kind of lizard carving on it, like part of a tea pillar and they dismissed it as a modern fake or a, a modern kind of reconstruction or something they'd done recently and then eventually uh, they left it at the museum a bit frustrated and they eventually kind of were seen by klaus schmidt which then he asked who the farmers were and they took him to the farmers they took him to gobekli tepe within a couple of years in the early to mid 1990s gobekli tepe got discovered so this rather rude looking statue, clearly a symbol of fertility, was the reason Gobekli Tepe got discovered. So thanks for watching Megalithomaniacs. Hope you enjoyed this brief visit to Channel Earth Museum. As you can see, there's some amazing things that are now on display here. So please subscribe, please check out our other videos. And of course, you can join us here and visiting all these other Tas Tebola sites in May and September, where we run two different tours to different parts of Turkey. So, so please let us know what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time.